morning, grade 7. I hope you had a great long weekend, even though it wasn't what a normal Easter weekend would look like. I'm so thankful that we are still able to watch Good Friday and Easter services where we're reminded that Jesus is our risen Savior, even if we can't be together in our churches right now. All right, so we have a full week of learning ahead of us. Tomorrow we have a math test. It'll be very similar to the quizzes that you've been doing online, but of course it will be longer. One thing I want to highlight in regards to that test is a reminder. Ask me for help if you don't understand your corrections. There are many of you that are not necessarily doing so well on the quiz, but then you're not asking me for help. You need to make sure you understand each concept. Don't just to go through your corrections and think to yourself, well, I got it wrong, whatever. You need to make sure you understand it. Everything builds in grade seven math, and this is also building a foundation for grade eight. So I'm happy to help you. All you need to do is chat with me. We can type together to figure out the answers, or you can video call me if that works better for you. All right, based on some people that have been asking me for help in the last few days, I've noticed that a lot of us are struggling with some subtraction work with fractions. So I want to show you two different ways to solve this problem. So here we have five and a quarter take away three and two quarters. Now what we're tempted to do is we're tempted to do, well, five take away three. But the reason I cannot do that is because I'm not able to do one quarter take away two quarters. So I have two different options in order to solve that. The first option is to put everything into improper fractions. So I can go five times four is 20 plus one, and I get 21 over four. Take away three times four is 12, plus two is 14. 21 take away 14 gives me seven fourths, which I can simplify to one and three fourths. So that's one way, putting the whole thing into improper fractions. The other way is to think about my five and one fourth. Remember, I can think of five as being the same thing as four whole pizzas plus four fourths. I haven't changed the amount of pizzas. So what I can do overall is I can really say I have four and four fourths, so my four fourths from over here, plus this extra one fourth. So I have four and five fourths take away three and two fourths. Now, because my fraction piece over here is larger than this one, I can do five fourths take away two fourths is three fourths, and then I can do four take away three is one, and I get the same answer. So it's up to you which way you wanna do that. I just want to review that with you. All right, so same thing as our lesson on Thursday. What I did was I took a few questions out of your review book so you don't have to do them all, but also to give you some examples. So here we have negative 10 and 3 fourths plus 2.25. So I can do a couple different things like this. If I wanted, I could take my 2 and 25 hundredths and make it a fraction. But what I think I'm going to do instead is I'm going to think to myself, I know what 3 fourths is as a decimal. I know that 3 fourths as a decimal is actually 0.75. So now that I have both of my numbers in decimal, more decimal format, it should be a lot easier for me. Now, don't forget about our negative sign. When you add a negative and a positive, you're actually going to find the difference between the absolute value of two of those numbers. So we have 10.75 and we have 2.25. So I'm going to find the difference between those by subtracting. My decimals line up. So my answer is 8.5. Now again, always think about your negatives. My negative number had the greater absolute value, so therefore my answer is negative. You can think of it this way. I lost $10.75. I found $2.25 back. How much have I lost? $8.50. All right, here we have again some subtraction with fractions. So handily, they're already in the same denominator. So I have negative one-seventh, and then I have subtract one-seventh. Remember, when I'm subtracting, I can always leave, switch, switch, and add the opposite. So I leave, I switch my subtraction to a positive, and then I switch my one-seventh into a negative. Now notice grade seven, we talked about this way back in our integer unit. This is subtract positive seven. 
it's don't don't be mistaken and think it's a negative one seventh. It's subtract positive one seventh. So when I switch, I switch to adding and I make this a negative. So be very careful there. Now because I have two negative numbers, it's easy enough. They're both negative, so I can add the top together and I get negative two sevenths. Okay? All right. Number 14, some algebra. So we have k plus 7 and 1 fourths, take away 19 and a half. My first step is I want to get k by itself. So what's happening right now is I'm adding 7 1 quarter. The new thing I'm going to do is the opposite. I subtract 7 and 1 quarter. Oops. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. Remember, this is my new thing. So that's what needs to show up on the other side. Subtract 7 and 1 quarter. These guys cancel out. So I end up with k equals 19 and a half. I'm just going to simplify it, clean it up. Subtract 7 and 1 quarter. Now because we're dealing with subtraction, I need my denominators or my bottom numbers to be the same. So I can go ahead and do that. I can just leave it as an improper fraction right now. I'm going to put it into fourths. So I have 19 and 2 fourths. Subtract 7 and 1 fourth. Now, because my 2 fourths is bigger than the 1 fourth, I don't need to do the step that I talked about earlier on my review slide. I can just do 19 take away 7 is 12. And 2 fourths take away 1 fourth is just 1 fourth. Now, it would not be wrong if you went over here and you put this into a mixed improper fraction and put this into an improper fraction. It would not be wrong. It would just be more work and more steps. All right, let's do two more samples together. Here we have multiplication. Now, remember, the nice thing about multiplication is that you do not need to have the same denominator. You just need to multiply the top and the bottom. So I have negative 5 ninths. And I'm going to multiply by this number over here. But with multiplication, I do, my highlighter's not working, I do need to, there we go, make sure I put my mixed numbers into improper fractions. So I think 5 times 12 is 60 plus 3. So I get 63 over 5. Don't forget. It's still negative. Now let's do some cross canceling. Again, you don't have to, but it makes your life a lot easier if you remember to cross cancel. So I'm going to divide by 5 here and up here. And then 63, that can be, both of these can be divided by 9. And I divide by 9 and I get 7. So I do negative 1 times negative 7 gives me 7. 1 times 1 gives me 1. 7 over 1, so I can simplify it 7. Now notice that it became positive because I did a negative times a negative. Same signs means you get a positive answer. All right, one more. This is a two-step equation. So we have x divided by 5 equals, divide, take away 12 equals 7. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the opposite of bed mass. I'm going to do the addition and subtraction first. So I'm going to go x divided by 5, take away 12. What's the opposite of take away 12? Add 12 equals 7. This is my new thing. So I must do the new thing on this side. Plus 12. Make sure your new things match up, even if you want to highlight it in your book. So now I can simplify. I get x over 5 equals 19. Now remember, do the opposite. x is being divided by 5. We need to do the opposite and multiply by 5. This is the new thing. If you multiply by one, 5 on one side, you must multiply by 5 on the other side. So this is my new thing. My new things match up. These guys cancel out. So I get x equals 19 times 5. Now, I could split that up. I can think 5 times 10 is 50, 5 times 9 is 45, add them together is 95. Another way I can think about it is, well, I know that 5 times 20 is 100, 
And then because I'm not doing it times 20, I'm doing it times 19, I can take away a group of five to get to 95. So there you have it. You have about 10 review questions to do for today. Then tomorrow I'll give you the marking guide so that you can mark it before you do your final test for this chapter. And then you've completed a whole chapter of online learning.